Hello everybody, this is the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Mars Horizon, a new turn-based strategy and space program management game that puts you in charge of uh, either the United States, the uh, Chinese, the Russians, the Europeans, or the Japanese space agencies starting in the mid-1950s and into the near future with the ultimate objective of getting your people to Mars first. Uh, in this episode, we are returning to 19, the 1960s, leading NASA. We were the first country to put a satellite into orbit, the first to put a sounding rocket into sub orbit, uh, but we were second in our attempt to put an animal into space. The Chinese beat us there, and so we are trying to close the gap and regain the advantage in the space where he's, we're trying to fulfill a promise that we made to our local press to be the first to put a man into space. We'll see if we're able to do that. This was taken from a live stream for my Twitch channel. I did rewind the live stream just for a little bit to cover this intro part so we could jump right back into the stream where we left off last time. So you're watching a little bit of a replay over this first minute or so. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Let me know your thoughts down below. And in this episode, we'll see if we can win the race into space on Earth is taking place in three years' time. Organizers have requested that your agency launch a satellite to collect required data. If accepted, your agency will be expected to complete the satellite imagery mission in the next three years of the current date. You will receive $750,000 immediately and $750,000 if acceptable. Yes, please. Three years isn't too long. All right, so we've got 750k. If we take a look at active... Well, actually, let's go to the map here. Human in space. No one is building yet. Satellite imagery... I guess we need to research redstone. I don't understand why we'd need redstone rather than delta. I'm one month away from completing satellite imagery. But I can use that money to do humans in space, right? Okay, so the Big Bag 1 will complete construction in nine months' time. The astronaut training facility will have five months to train our astronauts. Uh, funding review in one month. Meanwhile, I'll, I should have enough money within three years due to the imagery mission as well. Okay. I have to do two more boosters to get unlocked contractors. Well, we need to do the payload goes, actually. So I need 1,200 more research. That's what's going to take more time. So to finish the satellite imagery, we need the payload goes. The payload goes. Payload goes. All right, budgetary review. All right. So we get a little bit more money now. Launch paddle complete in one month. European Space Agency, by the way, orbited the moon with a probe, by the way, looks like. China is launching human space in 12 months. Well, our human in space is, is, is going to be complete in seven months, so at least the rocket will be completed then. So hopefully we can launch before them, because we promised we would get there first. Um, research is already underway on the required items. Astronaut training facility in two months. A documentary crew has requested a tour of your astronaut training facility. Security advisors have pointed out that other agencies might be able to learn about your program if such a documentary were to be released. I'll gain the support. A competing agency has gained science. That's okay. I think we're ahead in a lot of science, but... All right, so I need to, re need to hire some astronauts. You've received your first influx of astronaut hopefuls. Here you'll find a pool of trainee astronauts eager to be hired to your space program. Each potential astronaut has a higher cost and a monthly salary, as well as a special talent. Talents can have powerful mission effects. Keep an eye out for the most useful. More trainees will be periodically added to the pool, so remember to check back here often. Constructing more advanced astronaut training facilities will result in new trainees having higher levels of talents. All right, so we've got our first batch of three astronauts. We've got a comms specialist. We've got a celebrity and a problem solver. So the comms specialist... Uh, starts each task with plus one comms. The celebrity gives us plus 10% support upon mission success. 
and the problem solver a negative one random resource requirement per task. Um, this guy will be good till 1982, 1977, and 1994. So they're 21 years old and they won't retire till they hit 55. So this guy will be around the longest. The celeb Interestingly enough, the celebrity has the lowest hire cost. Maybe they're like a military celebrity, right? Maybe it's like Chuck Yeager or something. The celebrity also has the lowest salary, which doesn't seem real either. I don't understand what the problem solver benefit is. <laughs> wow, they put a lot of effort into the faces. <laughs> uh, so what's the benefit of the problem solver? I'm thinking comm specialist. Although I guess the resource requirement being less would be nice. What do we? Who do we want to name our astronaut after, by the way? I would name it after Newhauser, but that we're already naming our rockets after you. Bob Ross. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I'm just gonna just gonna paint a nice blue here on the edge of of the of the corner of the atmosphere as the rocket slowly makes its way up through the atmosphere and into space. All right, so we'll hire Bob Ross, uh, and then we'll we'll also hire the comm specialist. I'm gonna hire two astronauts, so we'll rename this comm specialist. We'll, we'll rename this one Gus Grissom. All right, so we've got two astronauts. Now, I don't know if there's any, like, training I have to do. That's kind of what I assumed, is that there would, there would be training that I would have to do prior to launching the mission, but I don't see anything about training, so I don't know if they're just, like, immediately ready or what the, what the requirements are there. We're already building the Big Bang 1. That'll be ready in five months. Hopefully we meet with a, a launch window that lets us get up in time, you know, before before the Chinese here. They're ready in nine months, so if our mission is ready in five, then we'll have a four-month period, hopefully, to get up ahead of them. Um, I mean, I would think they need training, but it maybe not. Maybe the training doesn't come till the later the later launches. If I go to the base and I... I go to the, where is the astronaut center? Over here. It doesn't say anything about just whatever. They're tier one astronauts. So I guess maybe they do come trained. Um, meanwhile, I guess we've got one mission underway. That's humans in space. Goes is going to complete in a while. It's going to be probably at least before our human space flight occurs. So we could probably do another mission here. Solar wind monitoring would give me 500k. Okay. I like the idea of more money. But how expensive are my rockets? Does it? I mean, if it doesn't net out, then what's the point, you know? So, what's the price of my boosters again? So, I need at least a Jupiter vehicle. So, that's 123. So, it'll net me like 200k. I guess we'll do that. All right, so that mission's being worked on. China's launching satellite imaging in 14 months. They, how, what? Uh, man, they're just all over it. They're doing human in space and satellite imaging.
Okay. Uh, let's reuse a design. We'll use the Neuhauser 2. It's not really going to net me that much cash. Human in space in six months for the Chinese. Human in space for the Soviets in 10 months. All right, the Big Bang 1 is complete in one month. How quickly, so I guess the construction's complete, right? So launch preparations. So this is a crewed mission, so I'll need to assign the appropriate number of astronauts. First off, launch day, oh, oh come on. Launch crew, so we're gonna go with Bob Ross for our first astronaut in space. Training will go with probably, well, reliability and payload are both over, so I guess reli payload would be, well, I just wanna make sure it doesn't blow up. So we'll go with that. And then launch date. So we can beat the Chinese by one month if we launch in December. Looks like they're slated for January, a January launch. The only problem is if, if there's bad weather in December, we may have a really tough decision. Otherwise, we can try and go in November, but there's a 20% launch reliability penalty anyway in November, so we're probably better off just trying for December, and if the weather's really bad, it's gonna be like a 19% penalty anyway. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go with December. This would slot us in to be first with a human into space. We'll probably wrap our stream up on that. Okay. We haven't done anything outside our solar system, or outside of Earth's orbit, by the way. Other people are already orbiting the moon. Goes research is complete, so that mission can begin preparation as well. We've already researched, we haven't researched a lunar orbit yet, so we'll go back to that, because we're going to need to get into lunar orbit eventually. Although, actually, do we have what we need in terms of satellite imagery? You've completed the required research for this mission, so I think we, we do. All right. So, we're researching lunar orbit. Humans in space, one month. Funding review will occur the month immediately following potentially launching the first humans into space here in 1961. <laughs> what the fuck? Where'd he come from? All right, so we get plus 10% payload reliability, minus 10% launch reliability. So instead of our launch reliability being in the mid 80s because of the training we were doing, it's down to 74. But I think that means that the training that we did, very fortunate that we that we um, researched what we or trained on what we did because it helps counter the launch reliability penalty that we're going to suffer here. So plus fifteen or so plus nine percent for launch reliability training brings our launch reliability actually up to eighty six percent. I'm confused here. Payload is 76, launch reliability is 86, but then I thought the impact there is whatever. It all comes down to this. What the hell is that like? Why is there, that's a weird looking just metal prong. Looks like there's a magnet up next to the rocket. The Big Bang 1, ladies and gentlemen. I hope our astronaut is feeling comfortable in there. Adequate conditions, plus two. Only a 3% chance of a catastrophic failure. Watch that 3% hit. I love the, the little the ice falling off the, the fuel on the booster. That's such a nice little touch there.
Hell yeah, plus 80, 85% gives us a perfect trajectory, plus one turn on the first mission. Yeah, boys. Booster one, upper stage one. It's a good launch. We've got a good launch. Mission is underway. Human in space. So we have to collect three comms resource, six navigation resource. All right, we have four power, one of one astronaut. Can you, <laughs> the crew resource is available. <laughs> crew can be used on commands. Okay. So we have five turns remaining. Uh, we need to get a, six of these and three of these. So we can use power to get two command resources. We can use power and the astronaut to get... Well, actually, we'll do this to get four of this. And then... I don't know. The data doesn't seem to matter on this mission as much as it does potentially supplying our ability to do some of these other things, I guess. What do we want to do here? I could use power to get two more of these. That would immediately get me to the comms resource required while being pretty darn close to the navigation required. Still having two power left over with four turns left. I'm just not sure what the best use of resources is here. I probably just want to get as much power as I can, or comms as I can. So we'll confirm these commands. A nice success on the first one. So first success here. Hell yeah, brother. Another success here on the manual trajectory update. Do a mission report and then ground control connection? Maybe. We'll see. I didn't look at what all they were what they were all named. Alright, three successes right out the gate without having to use any power or anything like that. For successes. So three out of three for the comms objective, four out of six for the navigation objective. We have two power left over for this turn. We're going to do one recharge of power for one of our three commands. We're going to do... Mission report and data transmission, I'm thinking. This leaves me two power left over to cover mistakes. It gets me damn close to the resource bonus objective while setting me up to spend a little bit on the manual trajectory update on the next turn to get our navigation level up. So first things first, recharge the battery. Another success here. Plus two and two. And data transmission, another success. So our failure levels seem a little bit low. You know, I, one criticism I had of Buzz Aldrin Space Program Manager is the game was just too damn difficult. But I do feel like uh, maybe this one, so far anyway, has been a little bit too easy. I'm sure I'm speaking too soon. I'm going to screw myself over. <laughs> um... All right, we'll spend one and one there. That gets us to 11. Then we'll go with this, which gets us to eight. And then... We will... I think we'll just recharge the battery. So three turns remaining. Another success. Got to get that bonus objective. Got to get that bonus reward. We're immediately going to do a satellite imagery mission following. Because we promised to do that within three years. It would be great if we could sneak in and beat the, the Chinese there as well. But we'll find out shortly. 
Okay, so, so far, a very good mission. Uh, we just need three more of these, so we'll do this. And we'll do this. And then recharge. So this should put us above our minimums on everything. And uh, a little bit of spare power in case we fail. Mission report. There you go, folks. Successful mission. And I don't know how re-entry factors into any of this. We'll see if there's like a risk of it blowing up on re-entry. Does it not have like a re-entry thing where there's like a odds of failure? I kind of would hope that re-entry has a chance of failure and that it's not just as long as you launch successfully, it's it's a success. Like, show me some odds there of a failure on the re-entry point. None? Oh, that's a little bit disappointing. Shut up. <laughs> uh, the boats did look like they were sinking. All right, so we get 1,200 uh, thumbs ups and 525 in research for the next four months. Uh, meanwhile, it's going to take our astronaut six months to recuperate. Bob Ross, the first astronaut in space. Who would have thought that Bob Ross would be the first astronaut in space? I know I would not have. All right, so we have one more spot for a mission. If we go to milestones here, satellite imagery, the, the Chinese are planning one in six months, the Soviets in 11, and the ESA in 14. If we go ahead and plan this mission, I don't think we can beat them because the construction times will be too great. Build time for this will be three months. But we'll still do it. We said we'd do it within, within three years. Complete all mission plan stages. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the sub there, AJ Czar. Appreciate it. Tier one sub, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, all right. Solar wind monitoring? Is that ready for launch? Training. Go here. Set a launch date. We're good here. Confirm mission setup. Roger that. All right, we'll get some extra cash there. I'll just get through the next month so we can get to our next budgetary review. So we gained 400 support for Race to Space 1. The news is dominated by your agencies launching the first human into space. They kept their promise, read one prominent headline, alluding to your previous claim that you would be the first to achieve the milestone. So 400 more support right ahead of our budgetary review, which is great. Plus 1,400. We didn't quite get to level 7. We need about 1,300 more for that. But it does increase our budget to 210,000 per month. Lunar orbit research complete. And solar wind monitoring ready for launch. So let's get this baby off the ground. This will be a $500,000 bonus should our mission succeed. With the new Hauser 2. Uh, Roger, uh, mission control. New Hauser 2 is ready for launch. Adequate conditions for launch. Not great conditions, but we should be good. Five, four, three, two, one. Jupiter booster ignition. Here we go. We have liftoff. There we go. You got. I do love. They they do a good job of having like some of the atmospheric effects there. You can see sort of the the buildup of pressure around the rocket as it goes up. It seems more pronounced on like the human rockets where, you know, we had a, we had a, uh, the, the ice coming off the side of the, the fuel boosters and everything like that. So I think they do a really good job of some of these little things. Uh, and it's, it's fun to watch. 
it'd be interesting if the launches were a little bit more complex, but um, overall, I think it's still still quite a bit of fun. All right, so now we've got to go ahead and do the in-mission stuff. One and two. We've got four turns to do it. So let's do this and this. Signal return test is a success. So we get the one comms data. Then we do the uh, just the, the regular data. We get three for that. So the first turn is very successful. We've got two more power for this turn. So we'll go ahead and spend one of these on plus three for the comms power. And then one power and one... Actually, no. Let's do. Let's recharge the battery. We've got three more turns anyway, so there's no real bonus to doing it super early. That way, if something goes wrong, I've got a little bit of extra power. Nothing does go wrong, though, so we uh, achieve that objective. And then we'll spend our one remaining comms point, or one comms point and one power on getting to the bonus objective here, and we'll recharge power just in case, again, something goes wrong with still one more turn remaining. So atmospheric sampling goes well. And there you go. Successful mission. Bonus objective as well. Plus 50% bonus. I'm hoping that means 50% more cash, which would be another $250,000 if that's the case. Heckin' yes, 750. That turned that into a pretty lucrative... That was like four months worth of income right there. All right, so China's Human in Space is next month. We're already ahead of everybody else there. The Go's complete in two months. I think I've completed all the rocket parts, but we're gonna we're gonna fail there relative to everybody else. You know, well, I mean, maybe not. Five months. What's the build construction? Four months, I think, is the the. So that's where it comes to. If we had built the redstone, maybe we would be in position to. No, we'd still be a month or two behind. So this might actually be the first mission objective or milestone where we're not first or second. We've been the first test launch, first artificial satellite, first human in space. The satellite imagery, however, we will probably be. I would guess second, or maybe third. All right, everybody, we were the first to get a human into space. We're probably going to lose the satellite imagery contest, however, but I think it was worth it to have the first human into space uh, be a member of NASA. Uh, we'll see how things play out, however, in our next episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I know I am. This is actually the end of the live stream that I ran on my Twitch channel for the first night when the game came out on Tw uh, onto Steam. So I do think I'll, by this point, I'll probably have streamed it at least one more time. Uh, but I know we've got a lot of different things, a lot of different projects that are currently ongoing. So uh, let me know if you want to see more of this. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll show more of this on the channel or not. I really enjoyed playing this game. It's a little bit laid back. It's a little bit chill. It's not like super... Uh, pressure intensive in the way that some of the you know some of the strategy games are where um, the gameplay seems very aggressively aligned against you maybe the harder difficulties are but it doesn't seem super challenging thus far you know we've always been first or in one case second we're probably going to be second in the satellite imagery as well so I, I'm not quite clear on how difficult the game is nothing catastrophic has happened yet I hope it scales up in difficulty as we get further but that will be a topic for another time I hope you guys enjoyed Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.